Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 76 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I have been killing lots and lots and lots of chickens and pigs. The good news is though, I've gotten lots and lots and lots of, you know, cooked chicken and pig meat. But uh, what I've also gotten for myself is uh, a pair of tier 3 uh, soul shards. So you can see these guys are right up there in the tier 3 range. I uh, got a few more souls from chickens. Chickens are actually a lot harder to find than pigs. But I found a good spot in the overworld here. Actually relatively close to a village. Uh, just a little bit, I guess, uh, west of my house, I guess that would be. Because my house is over this way. So, yeah. So this is what I've been doing for like the last little bit. Killing chickens and pigs. So I've got tier 3 shards. Cool. Depending if I want to get them up to tier 4, I don't know if it's really worthwhile. We'll see. Maybe we'll see how the uh, farm goes with tier 3. I could always break them out and uh, get some tier 4s if I need to. Uh, now, let's see here. There we go. Jetpack on. Hooray! Flying home. Should be off in this direction somewhere. If not, I can just find my way back with a portal gun. Hey, there's all my stuff. Cool. All right, so today's episode, what do we want to do? Well, I want to work on this little area over here. Remember, uh, last episode, I set up this awesome guy. He is so cool and awesome. He is the iron golem who's going to be killing things for me and doing a nice job of it. Now, if I wanted to, I could throw um, the visors on him. And what those would do would be to allow him to collect experience as he kills things. And I could put that experience in a brain in the jar or something along those lines but i've got two experience farms here i really don't feel the need to collect more experience so i'm not even going to bother uh worrying too much about that but what i do want to set up um is down here make this a little bit fancier than it currently is right now we've got the cow farm going on i want to expand this and add uh chickens and pigs so i've got the shards ready to go i think i can just quick and easy put together what i need to right yeah it shouldn't be too big of a deal let's put down a There we go. Soul cage. Where is it at? Cool. I need like two of them. Hey, perfect. I had just enough uh, of the bars in here for that to happen. Nice. Now, how am I for red alloy wire? Let's put away some of the junk that I've collected while killing things. Look at all this stuff that I've got in here. Lots of feathers. All right, that looks better. I'm even going to put this empty soul shard away and red alloy wire. Yeah, we've got a bit. That should do for now. So I want to demonstrate to you guys how this is going to work at a basic level. And then we're going to, uh, you know, turn it up a, lot, a little bit of a notch and make it look even cooler and more fun. So let's clear this and this. Cool. Um, now we're definitely going to want to plant this guy and this guy down. I want to go down here for a moment and make sure that this lever connects to all three of these things. So what we're probably going to need to do is, uh, you know, oh boy, got some cows spawning. I hear them already. Take them down. <laughs> Iron Golem's already doing his thing. Okay, uh, so if I turn the lever off, we should get a lot more cows than we do um, of the chickens and pigs, but we should start getting them as soon as I place them right in there. So there's some pigs, and come on, cow, get out of my way. There we go, chickens as well. Nice. That, now like I said, a lot more cows than chickens and pigs, but that's okay, not a big deal. I mean, if I wanted to get serious about it, I could go for a tier 5. I might even get another iron golem or two, because, you know, the amount of animals we're going to have in here, I don't feel like one iron golem is going to be able to handle this. <laughs> oh, that's cool. All right, so that's the beginning of this episode. We're going to get this guy going. We're going to handle our stuff. Now, uh, next, we're going to get a couple more iron golems and probably some wooden golems to start collecting all these drops. Then what I want to do is turn those drops into uh, cooked food, and we're going to want to get some nuggets so we can start making some of those awesome meaty treats. And we might just have a little bit of fun with this, you know, making more exciting things happen. So... Are you guys done spawning here or what? Are they still spawning or are we... Oh boy, things are still spawning. Okay. Let me get down there and straighten that out. Ah, uh, yeah. That's going to be trouble. I got to make this work a little better. Yay, we have strips. Cool. I thought that would work. 
Oh boy, there's just tons of bad guys, or good guys, I guess, showing up. Now, can you guys please, please stop spawning? What if I do this, huh? Come on. Will that make you behave? You can see how this can get out of control pretty quickly. Alright, I think that did it. Cool. Alright, we'll be back in a minute. Alright, I'm back. I have made myself one smart iron golem and two fast wood golem workers just because I want them to, you know, work quickly here. Uh, now, why have you stopped killing things? That's my first question. Monsters, animals, yeah, go ahead. Let's go, buddy. What you doing? Just chilling? Alright, let's put this guy down. Ah, oh, there he goes. He's moving again. Good. You? Can you, uh, please also kill animals? Thank you. Nice. Now, as for the collecting of items, that's the tricky part. Let's see. How do we want to handle this? That's a really good question. What I'm thinking is, like, let's get something to temporarily stand as the, uh, collection of items, and then we're gonna add to it and make it fancier. So we've got the iron chest right here. I'm just going to put this guy in the corner and put the uh, two wooden golem workers on here. They should quickly run around and collect everything that the iron golem workers are collecting for us by way of killing things. Cool. Look at that. Beautiful, right? Now when we flip the lever on, it's really fun time. Chickens and cows and pigs and all kinds of good stuff. Dropping all their goodies. And the wooden golem workers, because I gave them the speed boost by, uh, you know, crafting one of those uh, speedy things, you know, I'll show you. One of these guys, the animation core with speed on it. Yeah, definitely makes them run faster and just behave a little bit better. Cool. Now, things should be done spawning, so uh, I'm going to let these guys finish off what they've gotten so far, and then we're going to move on to the next stage of the build, which is going to be the infernal furnace. It looks like things are still spawning a little bit, so come on, guys, stop now. It's, it's enough already. I understand. You're not behaving, but try and behave a little bit. All right, back in a few. All right, so I remembered why, uh, you know, these things were spawning like this. Uh, you need a tier five soul shard in order to respond to redstone signal. I thought it was three or four, but I just looked it up to just double check and it's, yeah, five, darn, I forgot. That's gonna be a nuisance. So I had to break them, get them stopped from spawning. So, hmm, how can we handle this? Good question, let's see. All right, guys, I think I found a solution to my problem. We're going to have to, you know, mess with it a little bit here. But, uh, you know, here's the deal. You ready? We're not going to wind up you. Come on, guys. Come on. Stop it. Stop being stupid golems. Go back up where you belong. Please. Thank you. Uh, we are not going to be using redstone anymore. No, sir. We're going to have to do something a little bit tricky to work around the limitation of being able to turn on and off the spawners at tier 3, uh, you know, with just a simple redstone signal. Like, that's not going to work out. Where did you go now, stupid golem? There you are. Okay, good. So let's uh, clean up this whole mess that I've got here. In fact, I'll probably clear out this whole underground area. We don't need any of this anymore. The reason I'm clearing this out, by the way, is I want to make sure we don't get any animal spawns down here. Because animal spawns underground, big nuisance, trust me. You don't want to deal anything with it. Alright, so we're going to clear this out still. I know, you guys are all anxious to pick up the cobblestone. Go have a blast. Alright, uh, what I'm going to do, and I was in my test world, you know, testing this out. So let's go back to recipe mode here. I am going to come up with a neat solution, at least I think it's neat, that will help solve the dilemma of tier 3 spawns spawners and not being able to disable them with a simple redstone signal and at the same time we're going to deal with a solution to deal with uh i want to be able to turn this on and off whenever i want i want to be able to say like yeah start shearing the sheep have a blast and then turn it off if i want and just no longer shear the sheep how are we going to do this well let's get started working on it and we'll see all right, if you're paying attention to my inventory, you might have seen something fancy down there called the mining turtle. That's right, we're going to use turtles uh, to deal with this. What happened to all my sheep? Anybody? Oh. <laughs> did, did my iron golems get out and kill all my sheep? Really? Really? Iron golems, how did you get out? There's a fence. There's a fence. You're not supposed to kill my sheep. No. No. Terribly bad iron golems. Oh, you're awful. I hate you and everything you do. Oh, 
No, that's not true. I love you and everything you do, but you killed my sheep. That is not... How did you even get out? What did... What? The what? All right, so that's going to have to be further away, clearly. Uh, that's not cool at all. Oh, well. I'll have to, you know, replace the sheep farm at some point. I just lost half my sheep. That is not cool at all. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I still have a cool idea on how I want to do what I want to do. And that involves this turtle. Let me write a quick program. All right, now, I think I've managed to do this properly. We're going to wait and see. Uh, we're going to find out right now, actually. Uh, now, this isn't going to be the permanent solution to this, but uh, it's just a temporary one. So let's see if I set this up correctly. Uh, if I did, then when I run the program called place, it should do this. Oh, you know what? He needs coal. Yeah, that's why he's stuck retrying endlessly. That reminds me I should do something. All right, let's try this again. Place. Go. All right, that was close. Almost. All right, one more try. It's a really simple program. I'll paste it for you guys if you want. Hey, there we go. We're getting cows. Look at that. Cool. And pigs. Nice. Now, is remove going to work, or do I have to mess with that a little bit, too? Oh, that's not going to work, actually. It's going to kind of work, but it's not going to do exactly what I wanted. All right, not bad. All right, I think we're ready for a good demonstration now. Uh, I've actually moved this chest because I think they were jumping on top of the chest to get out of the fence. That might be how my golems got out. Maybe. All right. If I run the place program, it should do this. And it kind of worked. All right. Got to tweak a little bit here. Let's do remove. That works better. It's just about how it's placing the items. As long as these guys are on the right slots, we should be good. I just have to fix how it picks them up in the remove program. Oh, look. There we go. Nice. And then we run remove. So the key here is that it has to dig, and when it digs, it drops the soul shard on the ground. And then, uh, you know, when that occurs, you know, it's not a big deal. But, you know, we want to make sure that it um, picks that up. So you want to do a turtle suck after the turtle dig. And that'll ensure that it picks up the soul shard after it's done. Cool. Nice work. All right, Mr. Turtle. Let me pay spin these guys. Let me tweak them a little bit. Just get the uh, positioning right. Because you can see here it's not picking things up in the right order. And I'll be right back. All right, that seems much better. As you can see here, we've got the, uh, just re-ran the program. Uh, I wanted to position him. He was a little bit off position, but now he's in good shape. And you can see, ta-da, spawning everything. And running the remove program, he'll start removing everything. Now, I don't want him to live inside this little, you know, area. I want him to kind of come out from somewhere, I don't know, like a little home or somewhere cool for this turtle to live, uh, where he's going to come out and, and position these things. But this is just getting the basic program working. Maybe I'll pace spin it once I'm done with the entire uh, concept here. But as you can see, everything's working pretty much exactly as you would expect. Hooray! So now let's look into the next part, which is a lot of fun. I want to show you guys how to make this nifty little gadget here. Where is it at? Mm, there it is, Infernal Furnace. Hot enough? <laughs> we need uh, a bunch of nether brick and a bunch of obsidian and a little bit of lava and some iron bars and a little bit of magic. So let's get some. Uh, how are we for obsidian and nether brick? That is an extremely good question. Obsidian? Good. We got a decent amount. Nether brick? Uh, yeah, actually, pretty good. Nice. Uh, iron bars, are we good for that? Oh yeah, we got tons of that stuff. And then, of course, we want a little bit of lava. Uh, we got some lava cans, but I'm going to want a bucket of worth. So let's just get a bucket, and we'll go deal with a little bit of lava collection in a moment here. Let's see, downstairs I should be able to collect myself a little bit of lava right here. Beautiful. Now, off we go to build this awesome structure. So let's see, where are we going to want to put this thing? I'm thinking right behind the farm. So let's go... Clearing out this terrain right back here.
maybe one more line's worth, because I think we want to have a decent amount of space. And what I might even do, just to make this like extra awesome, is uh, recycle the usage of a couple things. So let's take this stuff in stride. Uh, what I'm going to do here, and you can see my golem's already getting a little bit antsy, not a problem. Uh, I'm going to clear this out. Of course, they have a little bit of a heart attack every time an item drops on the ground. They're like, oh, I want to pick it up for you. Okay, thank you. That ought to do it. And maybe just to be extra safe, something along these lines. Cool. All right. Let's build our infernal furnace. Now, as the structure showed, and we're going to bring it up again, uh, we want five obsidian like that and then nether brick in the corners. All right. So let's put it right here-ish. Oh, yeah. That was a mistake. Of course, it's the obsidian that I misplaced. That actually wasn't too bad of a mining process. And how are we for like a nice centered position here? Three and yeah, maybe I want to move this over one. There we go. Just moved them and now we're ready to place down the brick. Now the second layer of this thing, as we see, uh, is going to be brick on the outside and obsidian kind of the same. But in the front, we're going to want to put this uh, thing here, one of these guys. Cool. Uh, so let's put this and this and that and then the lava right in the middle. Cool. And then the top part pretty much I think is the same as the bottom except we want an open empty space in the middle. Cool. I can manage that. No problem. I so love multi-block structures. They're so awesome. I mean it really adds a lot to Minecraft here. All right. And then a little bit of a whack with a magic wand. So let's get one of those going. Magic wand. Yeah. Wand of the Thaumaturge. Boom. Ah, cool. Now you know you did this right if you see like some flaming fire and like these little eyes here and stuff. Everything is ready to cook up. Now this thing is really pretty cool. Here's how it works. You ready? Uh, just go ahead and uh, drop some items into it that you might want to smelt up. Now it's getting a little bit dark out, so how about we sleep through the night and then I'll demonstrate this awesome little design. And here we go. Here's the trick. You ready? Just drop an item in the top. Okay, let's say right up here. Boom. And don't worry, it's not going to get like destroyed or nothing. It's going to go and uh, spit out the front once it's cooked. Maybe cobblestone it doesn't want to smelt. Yeah, I think it just spits the cobblestone out. It says, nah, I don't want to deal with cobblestone. You're not fancy enough for me. Oh, wait, no, it did. Cool, it got it. There we go. So yeah, that's all there is to it. Drop an item in the top and it will smelt. Now, you have an occasional chance for something extra cool to happen. Let's throw some raw pork chop in there. This happens with uh, pork chops and, uh, and other types of uh, stuff like uh, iron and gold and pretty much anything along those lines. Watch what happens here. It's going to spit out pork chops out the front that are cooked. Awesome. But every now and then you've got a chance of getting something called a nugget. And uh, we'll see if it shows up. Oh, did we get one? Yeah, we did. We got a pork nugget. Nice. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, you don't get as much, but let's see. What can we use pork nuggets for? Oh, you can use them to make the triple meat treat. Now, we're also going to need beef and chicken nuggets. Gee, I wonder how we get those. Good question. But we're not going to stop there. I want to show you guys something else that's really neat that goes along with this. It's the arcane bellows. Now, we're going to need to make an infusion altar here. We're going to need some arcane wooden blocks, some leather, an air shard, and an iron ingot. Oh, boy. It's uh, it's going to do some good stuff for us. So you can see here, it, uh, it acts pretty much like its mundane counterpart. The only difference is that it happily pumps away by itself. Nice. Attaching it to an infernal furnace has shown some nice results. I can't wait to try this thing out. These guys are really cool. So let's get uh, three of them, as a matter of fact. We're going to want one, two, and then we're going to want three right here on the back. Cool. So that should be good to go. And now you guys know why I built this thing inside the little structure that I've got going on. I wanted to make sure that my golems could go pick up uh, whatever gets spit out of this infernal furnace. So let's get the arcane bellows going. I'm going to need a few minutes here to get ready, and then we'll be right back when I'm ready to go. And there we go, arcane bellows. I'm making these one at a time because it looks like one of my chests, or uh, ba buckets over here, these little, you know, jars, had some of the ore there. Uh, we're going to need another one of these or two, so let's throw 
32 of these in. That'll get me the excess that I need of the modus. Okay, now I need uh, 48 aura. Oh boy, that's gonna be tricky. Well, as much as I hate using these, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the feathers in there. It's gonna make a little bit of a mess, but it should get me two more arcane bellows and a lot of uh, excess junk in the environment. Oh well, no big deal. Uh, we collected most of it. Oh good, and actually kind of did a good job of collecting it too, so I think we should be all right. Take care of that for me, would you, golems? Oh, you guys are so cool. Golems are definitely one of my favorite mod items. Or entities, if you will. So let's put the arcane bellows on. You can see they even animate in your inventory, so you know they're going to be cool in the world. Look at that. Boom. Nice. Now that's going to increase the efficiency of this furnace. And what I think that means is we're going to wind up getting more chicken nuggets out of it. Or, you know, whatever form of nugget that we get. So we went and threw eight in there. We got one uh, pork nugget. Let's go ahead and throw eight more pork in there. And let's see. Now, of course, it is a little bit of random, but, you know, we'll see what we get. There we go. And go to work, guys. Oh, cool. Look at that. Oh, it's going much faster, too. Whoa, it's cruising. Nice. And I think we're definitely, whoa, we're getting a lot more nuggets. Holy cow, this thing is doing a nice job. Now, if you look at my aura, you'll quickly note that we are using aura to smelt things. This is not totally free. We're using a little bit of magical energy here, and that is probably going to hurt. So uh, we want to make sure we have a nice, strong aura node in this area. And luckily we do. We have one that's got about 810 out of a max capacity, and we're about to merge it probably either this episode later on or next episode with another even larger one. Oh, that's going to be awesome. So uh, nice, strong aura node going to do its thing. We've got some serious nuggets going on. Let's now take care of uh, maybe automating everything else here. Yeah, let's definitely do that. All right, guys, let's talk automation. Now, what I want to do is actually a couple steps, and I think I'm going to do it underground here. So, uh, hmm, yeah. I guess so. We're gonna go to work. I know, you guys are all anxious to pick up this dirt. I know, I know. Settle down. You'll be fine. See? Already freaking out, aren't you guys? Alright, I'll give you a path out for now. But, come on. Chill out, would you? They're so anxious to help. Oh wow, that was perfect guess. <laughs> Nice. So what I want to try here is something along these lines. If I could, what I'd like to try is this. I got myself some golden transport pipes. And what I'm going to do is uh, just set them up like this. I decided to go uh, build craft with this one. We're going to see if it works out. Might switch it up to red power to transport, but I'm just, I don't know. I think build craft ought to work. So let's come down this pathway and come on over here. This ought to do. Now there is a reason that I'm, uh, you know, doing build craft. I love autarkic gates, and I got one right here with me. Perfect. And because we've got the emerald gates now, I should be able to just say, hey, the only thing I want to pull out of here is raw beef, pork chops, and chicken. For now, at least. We're going to deal with all the other items that go and fall into this chest in a moment. Don't worry about that. But for now, well, maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I do want to pull everything out. Hmm. If I want to pull everything out, I should sort now, shouldn't I? All right. Let me sleep through the night. I'm just going to pull everything out and just sort it. Cool? Cool. All right. Let's see if I can manage to put all this cool stuff together here. All right. So what I want to do is set up the following. Um, down here I'll have one of these guys. Um, probably going to have the following setup. Um, I want to make sure this is semi-hidden underground, but not like, you know, completely crazy. Also, I want to clear this out real quick and just make sure it's nice and filled in. That'll do. So as items come out, I want to determine what they are. And the best way to do that is with a diamond pipe. And we're going to send um, anything that is. I'm going to put away a couple items in here for a moment just to make sure we're good. 
cool. Uh, raw pork chop, raw beef, and raw chicken straight down this path. So let's hook this guy up. Yellow. Cool. Now, anything that is, and you can see I cooked up a few chicken nuggets, beef nuggets, and pork nuggets. Okay, any of those guys we want to send into a fabricator. Good deal. Uh, I don't think I can feed a fabricator from the top, can I? Pretty sure I can't. Uh, let's test it real quick. This will do. Fabricator. Real quick, just testing if I can feed a fabricator from the top. Don't think so. I know they won't treat adjacent inventories from the top, but we're going to find out if... Yeah, see, look, it fell on the ground. All right, that's going to make this a little bit of a trickier build, but it should still survive. Yes, you guys are very good. Well behaved. Thank you. Not that much trickier, to be honest with you. Yes, you are a simple wooden golem. That's exactly correct. Ah, so annoying. I should just kill them. Hit them with a wand or something. That's alright, they'll behave for a little bit. Alright, I want to put the... I'm going to put the fabricator here. That means I'm going to put the ender chest here. Okay, and that is the blue slot. We're going to say anything that we don't know what to do with, send down the blue slot. Anything that's a wooden transport pipe can go up the white slot here. I don't think, well, anything would, everything would be coming from there, so that should be fine. I just don't want anything to bounce up into the chest by mistake. Shouldn't really matter, though. And this guy, we can go ahead and replace with a wooden. Cool. That'll do. And then here is where I'm going to place my fabricator. Yeah, I know, you're simple and stupid. And this guy, we're going to put the recipe for the meat treats in. Cool. I even brought myself a little bit of sugar to help out. Now, uh, I want to also have... This is going to make my golems go crazy. But I want to have this guy here to pump items out. So we'll just say Autarkic Gate, pull anything out of here, uh, Redstone Signal is off, Energy Pulsar, cool. So now what I can do, if I really want to test this out, just to demonstrate, and this should work. Oh, you're pulling the sugar out. You are terrible. I don't want you to do that at all. Stop it. No. <laughs> all right, probably going to have to use the Emerald Pipe there for the meat treats. Cool. Emerald pipes to the rescue. I'll move my columns in a minute with my thing. All right. We'll use the emerald pipes. Let's just throw a meat treat in there. Cool. Meat treats are so awesome. We'll put this in the interface. Say you're only allowed to pull out triple meat treats. Then we'll say a target gate. There we go. Cool. So when there's a triple meat treat in there, it will get pulled out awfully quickly. So green path will then again be uh, chicken nuggets, beef nuggets, and pork. That's green path. There we go. Cool. So, just to recap, anything that needs to be cooked, raw pork chop, raw chicken, raw beef, go over there, cook it up real quick. And uh, I actually broke this a minute ago when I was testing, so we need to get back. And we shouldn't need this anymore. So that should spit everything straight down into there. Should we give it a shot? Totally think we need to give this a shot. 
I am even going to move my golem. Come here, stupid. And just clear out some of the uh, underground area here. Like I said, I don't want any animals spawning down here because that would just become a nuisance. So fill it up with cobblestone. Maybe we'll wand of equal trade it later or something. Probably won't. Probably will forget. It's okay. It's what I do. I do want to watch everything happen, though, so we'll leave this part going. Okay, I also have to put on the autarkic gate. And redstone signal off, energy pulser. Now, we should start clearing things out, and everything should zip straight into the ender chest. We should see that thing happening. Now, uh, items are going to go down there and head down the blue path. Now, if we keep an eye on the ender chest, we'll see everything moving into there. Perfect. Nice. You know what I could do with? I'm going to turn you off for a minute. Now, a couple things will make their way down that path, I think. Oh, yeah, we started clearing out some of the leather. Perfect. That stuff will all just get sorted and we'll be fine. I want it to be daytime, and I want to make sure that these golems don't get stuck. So, I got an idea. There we go. Glass viewers. Because I know my golems are just going to be stupid and get stuck, right? Yeah, we know that. Alright, probably not exactly what I wanted to do, but good enough for now. I'll tidy it up in a minute. And redstone signal off. There we go. Just while I wait for everything. Now all the leather and everything is going down there. I'm going to purposely clear out the feathers and we should see the triple meat treats start to show up. And then we'll know that's happening by the way because we'll see uh, meat treats show up in here. We've currently got one triple meat treat, right? So as it clears out the uh, nuggets, it should be crafting those for me. Now manual right now is the uh, process for the sugar cane. Oh look, we can see triple meat treats showing up back there. Awesome. Nice, exactly what I wanted to see. And then finally, it's time for uh, the cooked pork chops and steaks and chicken. That's all going to get sent into uh, my sorting system here. Perfect. Meat treat should have, oh good, four. Nice. I can put away most of these things here. Good. I'm just waiting for uh, the real exciting part, which is going to be... Because what I'm really concerned about here, guys, is how well is this thing going to handle? I'm just going to steal this. Then we'll really start pulling stuff down. How well is it going to keep up with the amount of items I'm throwing at it? If I throw like a stack of the stuff at a time, is it going to be a problem or is it going to be cool? We're going to find out in a moment. Go, meet, go. Uh, he's having a little bit of a trouble. <laughs> they picked up uh, raw stuff. All right. Not terrible. That's not too bad, actually. It's doing an all right job. Now what's going to happen is it's going to automatically cook up. It's going to land back in the chest, and the chest is going to resort it does look like they're somehow picking up some of the raw stuff, but that's not a big deal. They're putting it away and doing their thing. Cool. Look at them go. You also do get a little bit of experience from this, so maybe I should put a brain in a jar nearby. Do I even have one of those still? I might. Ah, yeah, I do. Nice. I thought I had one. That's the one that used to be there.
There you go. Collect that up, Mr. Brain in a Jar. Did you guys handle all that food already? Oh yeah, look, it's just uh, clearing out the raw pork chops now. Cool. Look at it go. Now it's going to take care of uh, some more pork chops. Should all send and land in there. So I think this is working. And it's actually, the furnace is keeping up pretty well. I do want to see what kind of environment I'm having. Uh, oh, that's not too bad. I'm doing all right in terms of the, the aura, the V. Yeah, see, they are managing to catch some raw pork chops. That's okay, though. Not the end of the world. They really should be able to pick those up, I don't think, but oh well. Oh look, here comes the beef now. Nice. That's clearing out. Perfect. Alright, I'll be back in a minute once this is all done. See, this actually works out pretty well, because it throws a bunch of like raw beef in there, and then once they've managed to collect some cooked beef and some chicken nuggets, that's going to go through the emerald pipe. So it gives like the furnace a little bit of time to catch up and, and finish what it's working on before it really goes crazy. Nice. And at the end of the day, we should have at least a few by now. Triple meat treats. Nice. Got five of them. These guys are really good, by the way. Go ahead and chew them up. Om nom nom. They replenish a good amount of health and even have a chance to give you guys a bit of a regeneration buff here. You can see that right there. The other cool thing about these meat treats is you can eat them even when full. You don't have to wait until your hunger bar is empty to eat the meat treats. So, number one, we've got a serious amount of meat treats coming in. Number two, we've got an awesome amount of uh, cooked steak and uh, pork chops all showing up. Wow, look at that. I'm going to grab a stack because uh, I only have one more meat treat for now. Because we're just starting to get to the uh, steak portion and the chicken, we've got a few more to cook up. We also need to get ourselves a little bit more sugar. Like I said, uh, the uh, sugar for now uh, is a manual process. We're definitely going to automate that at some point just to make sure it's cool. There we go. More sugar in there. Nice. How are you doing? So we're waiting on... We've got a bunch of pork and beef. Uh, we could use some more chicken. There we go. That'll help. Cool. Nice. We've got a pretty serious system here. So what do we got? We've got uh, a turtle that will uh, place down and pick up the soul cages. All right. Place. And we're starting to get more animals going on. And then uh, we can even do remove when we're done. And what he'll do is he'll, uh, you know, manage to, you know, clear out the terrain and even do some cool stuff. Oh, look. We missed the soul shard. That's annoying. I hate when that happens. All right, we're gonna have to keep an eye out for that. I mean, worst case, the wood golems will pick up the soul shard for us. Just, you know. And the soul shard would probably manage to find its way back into my access terminal, so that wouldn't be too bad. But, you know, it's a nuisance nonetheless. Uh, that's not a bad start here. I would like to make this a little bit fancier just for fun. I mean, at this point, it's functional, right? It's doing what we want it to do. I would like some kind of master control mechanism here so that we could, you know, manage this a little bit more manually uh, or automated as we could want. You know, we could kind of have like an on-off switch for each of the different components, uh, even for the turtle. Like we could have like a, a central area for that turtle to live. I don't want to just sit there in the middle of the area, but for now it's functional. So I'll be back in just a few minutes when we're ready to check out what's going on. Oh wow, I was having so much fun, I didn't even realize we passed the wrapping up point. So, uh, we're pretty deep into this episode, we gotta get going here guys, gotta wrap up the episode. I'm sorry to say, I know y'all hate it, I hate it too, but uh, episode 76, I think it's time to wrap up. So, this is Direwolf20 signing off, hope you enjoyed checking out uh, the progress made on this nifty little prospect. Uh, I think it's cool, I like it. And I'm gonna do a couple other cool things. I might do a little programming off camera between episode and next. Uh, get this turtle somewhere, you know, to live. He could like, I don't know, maybe live right here. That could be the turtle zone. I don't know, something like that. It would be cool. Um, I mean, he, he is a mining turtle. We could always have him like, you know, do stuff. That would be neat. I don't know. We'll find out something cool to do with him. He'll have a nice little place to live. We'll have, um, you know, just uh, maybe some kind of master control mechanism. I don't know if I want to have a computer with a monitor uh, to manage all these different components, or if I want to have just a basic computer for now. I do have kind of a larger plan for some kind of control system later down the line. Uh, haven't gotten too deep into what I want to do with it yet, so maybe this thing will get tied into that later down the line. But for now, definitely some kind of basic control mechanism just to make sure that this thing is behaving and doing what we want it to do. All right, guys, like I said, way past the wrapping up point, so Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed it, and take it easy, everybody.